So it's 2018, it's a new year, and yet another attempt to be a new OTRS Central. And I stated one of my missions in 2018 was to give other wrestling companies a chance because maybe I could find another product to latch on to, another product to kind of reinvigorate my interest in professional wrestling. Well, here is the first step on that path and that journey. I've been down this road before. I've been on this long flight to Tokyo, even though the show was technically in Long Beach when I walked it. Who cares? You get the point. It's time, baby. I know a lot of you nerds have been geeked up for months about it, and just because I called you nerds, you clearly got your flaming keyboard fingers on fire, engaged and ready to fly on. Well, you know what, bitches, I don't care. Because we're going to have some fun one way or another. It's time to talk about Russell Kingdom 12. Yeah! That's right. That's exactly where they belong. The Young Bucks in the curtain jerker, the opening match, because they suck. No talent, flippy, kicky, spot monkey, pieces of crap. Get them on, and then get them the hell out of the way so we can get to some actual real wrestlers. And I don't care how many shirts they sell, they should cease and desist being any type of relevant tag team in professional wrestling today because they represent so much of what is wrong with professional wrestling today, and they always have and will continue to be, for here and ever and a day, the bucks of suck in this guy's mind. Gilly! Don Callis! What the hell are you talking about? You just compared the Bucks of Suck, the Meltzer Marks, to the freaking GOAT, Michael Jeffrey Jordan! You said what they did was better! Michael Jordan won six NBA championships in a real sport and saved the universe from basketball playing aliens called the Monsters! The Young Bucks can eat shit and you two deserve swift kicks in your dick for saying it! Ishii did it! Ishii won the Never Open Weight Six Man Tag Team Championships! I mean, Ishii, Mark, I'm loud and proud and I don't care who knows about it! Brandy, I promise you, I promise you, Cody can't eat puss like I can. Believe that! And Cody, for the love of God, Dustin called and he said he wants his hair color back because somehow you took the Runnels family hair color and made yourself look like White Cisco. Oh look, Davy Boy Smith Jr. and Lance Hoyt still have jobs in wrestling. That's kind of cool. Oh my God, we're only four matches in. How long is this damn show? It's okay, Suzuki. There is nothing wrong with shaving your own head. Just look at me. You can put up with the cancer patient Kane comments. There's worse people you can be compared to. Kahashi, you're weird and newsflash. If Smokey was here, he'd kick your cat's ass. Why are people so big on Skrull? I mean, his name is stupid. And perhaps, just perhaps, instead of being a geek for his own crap, he should stop shopping for umbrellas and writing on them and learn how to throw a right hand. Please! Oh my god, this IC match is so boring. Make it stop. Make it stop. And we still have more matches to come. Oh, Jesus. There's still two more matches. And I'm fighting sleep right now. Thank God I brought my New Japan wake-up device. Come on. Jericho and Omega's next. Jericho and Omega's next. See Matt and Nick Jackson, at least when I know sell shit, it looks cool. You suck. Well, I see Chris Jericho's getting himself into fine cruise shape for October. Chris versus Kenny. If this truly is Alpha versus Omega, five hours after the beginning of this never-ending incessant show, can this match please be the end? No? We've still got a world title match? Ah! You know, Naito kind of looks like a Japanese male version of my Aunt Penny. There's something weird yet comforting about that. Hashtag favorite aunt. Good God, Okada is like New Japan's version of John Cena. More in ring talent, but the comparison is valid, damn it. He never loses! So enough of that, it's time for me to actually review this monster 
of a show. And initial impressions were there were some things I really, really liked on Wrestle Kingdom 12, and there were some things I really, really didn't like. And you're going to find out all about them starting right now. So what did I like on this show? Well, the Young Bucks, if they're going to be on a show that I'm watching, I'd rather them be first so they can get done, be annoying, get the hell out of the way for the actual talent. And that's what I got here because that's what the fuck they are. Master self-promoters and ultimately nothing more than curtain jerkers at big time shows. They somehow managed to be just a teensy weensy itsy bitty less annoying than they usually are. Still massively annoying nonetheless. But at least they were first and got the hell out of the way for the real talent. As stated previously, I'm an Ishii Mark and I don't care who knows it. I find it so appropriate that him and Bad Luck Folly, is that his name, got a much bigger reaction out of headbutts and teasing a suplex and then ultimately hitting a suplex than any of the flipping and kicking and twisting and no-selling stupid crap that the Young Bucks did in the opening match. Because, but ow, that crap can still work in wrestling. Wrestling can still be about that. Telling a story in a damn match. Imagine that. I actually enjoyed Cody versus Ibushi quite a bit. Quite a bit. Brandy is a great natural heater for Cody. Like me, seeing Cody with Brandy makes me instantly not like him very much. So it freaking works. She's good at her role as that heel heater for him. I thought the action between these two guys was very, very good. Shame it was buried in this schmoz of the show in the third match. So a few hours later, when I'm still watching, I forgot almost all the hell about it. Lance Archer going around and throwing water on random people in the crowd was freaking awesome. Him and Davey Boy Smith Jr. as a tag team, cool stuff. I enjoyed their tag team work in their match. It was good. And again, I wish I could just randomly go around and throw water on people and say, this is my shtick, that's my character. Ugh. The hair versus hair match, Goto and Suzuki. I'm sure there are plenty of people that weren't that keen on this because weren't doing flaming ass tacks into barbed wire glass shards and crap. But here is a match where you actually have a story being told about, told about the honor that comes along with Japanese wrestling and how it's a great shame to have to shave your head. It's not a great shame, especially when you still are allowed by good old mom nature to have hair on top of your head to shave. Believe that! But in all seriousness, I enjoyed the storytelling elements of the match, especially as Suzuki tried to keep locking in Goto into that Gotch driver, and you've got Don Calisiris on commentary talking about how he could just win the match, but he's always so insistent on going for the Gotch driver. See, damn it, it's these simple things that can make a match really work. Hair versus hair match gimmicks can work, and you revolve the whole premise of this around this one move that Suzuki was going to go to all lengths to lock in, and then when he ultimately wasn't able to, it was going to cost him the match. So easy, it's brilliant! I wasn't a fan of the four-way for the Junior Heavyweight Championship, and in general, I'm not a fan of triple threats and four-ways and such. I will say within the match, I enjoyed the dynamics of the commentators telling the story about how Will Ospreay has never ever beaten Mar Marty Squirrel at any point in time throughout their career and blah blah blah. Whether I know that's true or not, I'm not fat checking this shit because I don't care enough about these guys in this promotion at this point to give a shit. But here's what I do know. For somebody that is casually watching, it makes for an easy story to follow and makes the finish mean something when Osprey does pin Marty to win the match, win the title. It's like, again, so easy, it's genius! And even though I was fighting frustration and fighting dozing off while watching this show on a Saturday afternoon, by the time I got to Jericho and Omega, I had just enough fucks left to give. And I'm glad I did, because I enjoyed the match quite a bit. Do I think because of the hype and some of the nerddom and geekdom and markdom and fandom for it, this match is going to be massively overrated? Absolutely. Do I think it is probably Jericho's best match that he's had in quite some time anywhere? Absolutely. Do I honestly think I prefer this compared to some of the other matches I've seen Omega in recently? 
Also, absolutely. Because with Jericho and Omega, I appreciated how this was supposed to be a big blood feud. It's a no DQ match. And right from the get-go, they're diving right in. They're not sitting there and fumble-fucking around in the ring for 10 minutes doing basic wrestling. This was a street fight, a brawl from the very beginning, which is what the story called for in the build-up to this match. I thought it was very well executed, even though the finish was predictable and you knew who was going to win. And there's something about them just trying to shove Kenny Omega down her throats that's a little bit revolting. Ultimately, this match really, really worked in and of itself for what it was. And the great thing about a Jericho as an opponent for an Omega, to me, he slows Kenny Omega down. And when Kenny Omega slows down and gets out of the cycle of spots, he can be very, very good as a performer, as a in-ring, out-of-ring storyteller. And I felt like with Jericho, it was a nice, natural opponent for him. Got him away from some of that crap. Even though, honestly, again, you had a ton of spots. But at least in this case, you had a bunch of high-impact spots. And they made sense because of the feud, the heat between these two guys that was being portrayed that had been built up for a while. And it was a no-DQ match. So, to me, this was truly the match of the night and the real main event of this show for me. And now we get to the real fun, what I didn't like about this show, New Japan Marks, it's time for you to flame on! Marcus Smart here, and I gotta tell you, stop right there, Shwagetti. Because when you get ready to talk about what you didn't like, about Wrestle Kingdom 12, the simple answer should be, say it with me people, absolutely nothing, because this was arguably, there is no argument, you do it just for kicks and giggles, the greatest motherfucker wrestling show of all time, until the next time New Japan does another show like this, and then that will be the greatest motherfucker wrestling show of all time, oh my god, what a spectacular, the young bucks are awesome, they move merch and they are athletic geniuses inside the ring. The true maestros of tag team wrestling today. Will Ospreay, I'm so happy for him. Yes! 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 He is the junior heavyweight champion. Yes! 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 And I don't give a crap what the schlug daddy says. He sucks. Marty Skrull is awesome. He is part of the Bullet Club. His umbrella rules, the gas mask, the wings, the entrance was legendary. Repeat it with me, people. Legendary. Because he is a legend and the greatest villain in professional wrestling today. And oh my god, I haven't even gotten to Alpha versus Omega. Huh? 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 Keep, keep it together. I've been waiting months for this. I can't wait to go on that cruise in October because, by God, Chris Jericho is a rock star of professional wrestling. How dare anybody knock him for paying tribute to Eddie Guerrero and most especially Chris Benoit. If his decision, those are his friends and he did it for them, baby. And Kenny Omega showed you truly why he is indeed at the very, very top of the list of greatest professional wrestlers in the world. And think about it next year. Maybe it could be Kenny Omega versus Daniel Bryan. Uh, and then the year after, uh, uh, Kenny Omega versus CM Punk. Uh, 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 and, and, and the main event, Okada versus Naito. This is a double main event. This is what we're talking about. I don't care what it is because it was all great because it's New Japan and this is the best wrestling in the world. This match, six stars, Alpha, Omega, minimum eight stars and this show, I don't care what monster says, my good friend, this show gets a Milky Way grade because it was the best in the galaxy. <laughs> The first complaint I had, and it's a major complaint, and it's typically a major complaint for certain brands, specifically New Japan, every match has so much shit going on, they do so many moves, so many spots, that by the time you get to the matches that are truly supposed to matter on this card, you've pretty much seen everything. So it no longer has meaning, sort significance, importance, none of that. 
Like in the first three matches, they all did some type of high impact spot on the apron. So by the time you get to the end of the night and they're doing that crap, you've seen it so many times that it doesn't matter anymore. No, this is not about the business evolving or changing. This is about undercutting the matches that matter the most and everybody going out there and try to one-up each other instead of building up the show to the crescendo that is supposed to be the main events of the night. No, our war machine going to WWE is that that's what's going on here because I didn't like Zack Sabre choking out a fucking monster in a random ass match with no real story that I could surmise out of it. Again, choking out a freaking monster. Maybe they're doing that because they're on the way out, whatever, but I didn't like it, and I'm not a Zack Sabre hater, I'm just saying. And how the hell did Michael Elgin get booked on New Japan's version of WrestleMania? Michael Elgin, like this D-bag, is going to get a payout from this show. What the hell? In that junior heavyweight championship match, I was trying to determine, is Marty Skrull supposed to be a face? Is he supposed to be a heel? Is he trying to be cool or is he trying to be hated? And the simple answer is, I didn't fucking know. I thought a lot of his ring work was frankly sloppy. I think his character is kind of dumb. I don't see where he has this overpowering personality. I thought the gas mask and wings were stupid. So what? Uh, screw you. Hate me. I don't care. But I think he sucks. Intercontinental title match was a snooze fest, a dud, and the lamest match on this card. And yes, I'm even including the Young Bucks into that conversation. And in particular, Jay White's Switchblade. And I wanted a Switchblade and take it to myself during this match. What the hell are they pumping this guy so full of smoke for? This match was crap. And I understand that wrestling companies now with these big shows want to get everybody booked and they want to throw everything out there, but damn it all, I shouldn't have to wait almost five hours to get to Alpha versus Omega, Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega. And even though I said, and I stand by that I wasn't looking that forward to the match, it was one of the ones I was at least curious to see on this card, I shouldn't have the rest of my the life drained out of me by the time I get to that match five damn near hours later. That's stupid. These shows are too damn long. And by the time I got to the main event, Naito versus Okada, I'm freaking cooked. I'm spent mentally, I'm spent emotionally, I have no more Fs to give during that match. So it's probably a match that would have been enjoyable if the damn show wasn't almost six hours long. And it does bother me, the overuse of finishers in these Japanese style matches. It kind of ruins the premise of the finish if you got to use it four freaking times. The finish should be the finish, and if it's not the finish, you should only have to use it one more time if there is a story there. And I know this was pumped up in the Japanese media as a big freaking deal, and it was a big freaking deal. But damn it all, I hate this crap. And what really bothers me about Okada is he uses a tombstone pile driver to set up to a finisher of a glorified clothesline in the lariat. The Rainmaker, ooh. It's like in fourth grade when you put the rice in the freaking cardboard tube and you made freaking rain sticks. Give me a fucking break. That clothesline, that lariat, that Rainmaker should be setting up to the tombstone pile driver. How the hell did we get a point in professional wrestling where the tombstone pile driver is being used as a setup move and as a move that people kick out of? And again, I come back to the length of this show. Professional wrestling needs to stop with this crap. Just because you can go longer, you have the ability to go longer, the desire to go longer with these big shows doesn't always mean you need to. Sometimes less is more. And almost six hours of damn wrestling is way too damn long. You cannot tell me that you need to have this many titles to begin with, but this many title matches on top of that, and you can't find a way to cup a couple of these damn matches short. Not every match needs to look the same. Not every match needs to be presented the same, have the same type of action going on, and basically go the same length of time. That's stupid. Like, I think back to the one tag match. Wasn't it with Archer and Davey Boy? They set it up. It looked like they were going to get a pin in like five seconds. Yes, they should have. You don't need 10, 15, 20 damn minutes plus every single freaking match. Because you create these long snooze fests of schmazes of shows, and it ruins my ability to enjoy it 
because I'm getting antsy, I'm getting aggravated, like some of you watching this damn review thinking it was going to be one thing and it was going to be another. Well, you know what? Tough shit. If you sat through six hours of this crap, you could sit through 20-something minutes of me blabbing on about it. This show is way too damn long. Professional wrestling has a problem with length, unlike with their penis sizes. Let's cut it short a little bit, damn it. Ow, my ass hurts, but I don't care because Russell Kingdom 12 delivered in every way imaginable, just like Rosie and Pamela are going to tonight. I feel like saying it like Britney Spears would have in her pop star days. Hit me, baby, one more time. <laughs> On the one hand, I can see why a lot of people are geeked and excited about this show. And I can see why they view Wrestle Kingdom every year as a big freaking deal. And you can see where New Japan tries to pull out all the stops to put on the best show they possibly can, unlike certain big companies with their flagship pay-per-view every year, WWE or WrestleMania. But when I come to a show like this, as a fan desperately looking for something to grab me and take hold of me and say, you need it in your life, you want it in your life, you have to have it in your life. Then I watch this crap. And this is like the ultimate nerdgasm. And yes, I realize it is damn near heresy to say it here in the YWC about professional wrestling, but sometimes too much in-ring wrestling is not a good thing. It is a bad thing. It is a very bad thing. It is detrimental to the product. This should have been a three and a half to four hour show tops. Give the big money matches the time that they deserve. Focus a little less on the matches that really didn't matter as much with the people that didn't matter as much. And I probably would have a much better opinion of what I just watched. But ultimately, I look at this and it would be one of those shows that if I had broken it up into pieces and watched one or two matches at a time, I'd probably like it a lot more. But the fact that I went straight through on a shot on a Saturday afternoon and watched almost six hours of this has me pissed off a little bit because I felt like this company took way too much of my damn time with too little entertainment value in return. Not because there weren't entertaining things on this show, but it is really hard for any wrestling company, I don't care who it is, to sit there and have a really good show and keep it at a certain level for six hours. And sure, the, the New Japan geeks are going to sit there and pump this show full of smoke like they do every damn show. Because ultimately, when's the last time any of them thought New Japan had a bad show? I rest my fucking case. But with this show here, less would have been more. That's it for the Wrestle Kingdom 12 review. I hope you found something amusing out of it. Remember, I'm the Schleg Daddy, and this is OTRS Central, and it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And if I'm ever asked to sit through six hours of wrestling like this in a straight shot again, I'm going to need my New Japan helper.